Uh, they have released a new saw. This is not one they've had that since I've been working with them. And uh, it's a clone of a uh, Husqvarna. I think it's a clone of like a uh, 365 uh, X-Torque. Because this is their version of the X-Torque. Uh, and this is the, uh, what is it, the three, they call it the G372XT. So this will be my first Husqvarna clone from them. I mean, a uh, Husqvarna clone from them. I had plenty of saws from them, never got a Husqvarna clone. Yeah, it's a, the same as the 365 X Torque. Huh. At least that's what it says on that little book. And so I'm going to assume there's a bit more uh, assembly required for this one. Hmm. I guess it doesn't fit the box. Into the funnel. That's a new one. All right. So here's this guy. And sure enough, I guess I had to assemble that. So I'm actually only just what a week and a day out from uh, my last surgery. So I've actually got a big scar running up the, my hip and, and uh, right butt cheek. Uh, I say scar. It's not fully healed yet, so I guess it's a incision wound or whatever you want to call it, and it's still healing. So, ah. but the doctor says it's good for me to get out and move around and whatnot. Wow, that's uh, that's a bigger dude than I was expecting. To be honest, I thought it would be a little smaller, but it is a 70, I believe 72 cc's. What did that box say? 71. 71 cc, so I guess it's not going to be too awful small. Okay. i got to admit, that's a pretty sharp looking saw. Of course, sharp looking don't mean much. It doesn't run. So we're going to find out how it runs. And how well it does. Packing stuff on this dude. Okay. Well, I can see that goes right there. There must be a hardware package in that blue bag right there. So that's a very easy to put on thing. Okay. Parking dogs. Three way Allen wrench. Got a three millimeter and then a short four and a long four. There's winch. There's the hardware bag. Okay, this is either an extra spark plug or there's no spark plug in. There's a spark plug in it, so it came with an extra spark plug. Well, you know what, I'll leave that open for a moment. We're going to take a look at that. Okay. Also comes with a file and a tuning screwdriver. Now, here's the funny part. It came with a file, but no bar and chain. <laughs> of course, that's typical of, of uh, this format. They sell the power heads, and then you buy the bar and chain that you want. So I've got to figure out what kind of bar and chain this takes, because I'm not sure I have any that fit uh, 
be a Husqvarna type, so I may have to go get one. I hadn't really planned on it, but that's what I have to do, is what I have to do, you know? pitch, so that means it will run 3 8 chain. Uh, I don't see... I guess it really doesn't matter for that. I just, as long as I can get a chain and a bar that uh, run a 3 8 pitch, uh, and the chain and the bar are the same uh, gauge, it should work. As long as it fits on the corner saw. That's the other part. So, let me see here. So the X torque, as I understand it, has a one has a larger torque capacity and it's a dual input. So there's like two paths for the air to go into the carburetor. It's kind of kind of different. At least that's how it appears. There's one down the back side that, and then one up the front. And when you pull the choke. It closes off the air going to both of them, though. Interesting. Okay, so I will tell you right up front. I don't know a whole lot about this corners. I have not had, well, years ago I just had some bad experiences with them, and so I've stayed, stayed away from them. Um, so maybe this one will convince me that they've changed and gotten better, <laughs> even though it's a clone of the ones that I had trouble with. <laughs> That is kind of funny. Uh, but anyway, the kind of use that we were using them for, nice, nice. Uh, the kind of use that we were using them for, they were getting used a lot, and it tore them up. So maybe the ones that we had on the crew were not actually meant for uh, uh, for being used all the time. I mean, like literally day, day in, day out. I think they got it on the outside. That's kind of odd. Why did they do that? Ah, okay, there we go. Let's get this hardware bag open and assemble this guy. So anyway, yeah, I don't remember the exact models of Husqvarna's we had, but they didn't, uh, they didn't hold up. And that's been some years ago now. Pushing and worked. And we'll have the first part ready to go. I'm assuming this will fit that. Yep, there we go. Pardon me a moment. Okay, got that did drop. Just a quick call from let me know that there's food inside for me. Uh, who needs food? I guess you guys, right? I'm probably going to die. <laughs> I don't think you're going to sustain me, guys. But at least I know it's there for me. Get to a stopping point. Alright. That seems to take care of that. And it's supposed to be... I've got to decide which bolts do what. That holds that on. Those go to that, and this goes to this. This is in here. Let me show you. That's going to be the three millimeter guy. Now, one thing I got to say is, like every one of these saws that I've gotten from them, the tools that come with it are enough to get it all put together and uh, make, it, make it go, you know, uh, as far as assembly. So you don't have to have like a whole bunch of specialized tools. 
Okay, although it does have a rule with it, I'm trying to do this sideways stuff, not working, so I'm going to grab a 3 millimeter of my own so I can use the long part. Of course, it does. It's kind of handy to have all your own tools to <laughs> do it if you need to. Like, for instance. Alright, and then this is going to go on there. So this is one that you don't have to run the outside dogs on because the, uh, the wrap chain guard that's down here is actually just connected to the inside one. Uh, on some of the still saws, it's connected to both sides, and so if you remove uh, one of them, you lose your guard. So I find it nice that they're doing that. Probably best to put this on while it's on the this covers on the saw. Don't uh, don't do as I do, do as I say type thing here, um, because you want these holes to be lined up so that it slides on and off there easy. If you're lucky though, you can put it on there and it'll slip on and off easy, huh, like that. All right, so I am going to have to go and look for a bar that fits this guy. And as soon as I find one, we will gas it up, oil it up, take it out, and try it out. Alright, thanks guys. See you in a few minutes. Okay, so yeah, that uh, took a little longer than I thought. Uh, went to four different stores before I finally found bar that actually fits this thing. Uh, I guess I should have ordered one. <laughs> All right. Let's put this guy on here. Make him all nice and pretty. Make him look more like a chainsaw. So on this model saw, the uh, uh, tensioner is on the cover, chain cover, guard, whatever, plate. So there is a chain. I'll just do it. Here it is. Yeah, I went to uh, tractor supply in the large. None of them had a bar that would fit this series of uh, uh, saw. And finally went to uh, Northern Tool. And they had it. But they actually aren't carrying any Husk Husqvarna stuff anymore. They used to uh, carry them. And now they've got a full line of still, which I found rather interesting. I thought that was great. Kind of like still. So, here's the uh, first thing I've run into. 
appears that the uh, tensioner does not want to move. I'm not going to force it because I don't want to break it. So instead, I will just take it apart and find out why it's not moving like it should. And hopefully something that's smaller minor that I can adjust and then uh, put it back together and go from there. Everything looks okay. It's just not uh, a real tight, tolerant fit. So let's just give it a shot here. I do not like how hard that turns. I don't know, there's like a spot in each rotation of the screw out here that it's real hard to get through and it gets easier. I don't know why that is. Maybe it just needs to wear in a little bit. But it does seem to be working now. There's still that one little catch though. It's really not right there. Of course, I started turning it the wrong way. So I'm kind of working back and forth a little bit before I put it on there. Now, I've run into this little issue. Yeah, that is, uh, that is something that would, I would like them to look into and correct. Uh, like, this is a Chain tension is a very important thing when running a saw because you do not want the chain to jump off and uh, damage you. All right, let's try this once more. You know, I was about to put that on the chain backwards anyway. <laughs> really good at that, aren't I? I had somebody comment the other day, and I had to laugh at it, it was, it was a good comment. He said, if you haven't put a chain on backwards before, you haven't operated the saw for very long. <laughs> I'm like, there's the truth. It is bound to happen. All right. So this is a full chisel chain by the way. This thing ought to chew some wood pretty nice. It is only a 20 inch bar. There's nothing bigger that I could find here locally. I'm sure you can get bigger bars for it. I know uh, this format has at least a 24 and I think they have 36 for it too. I did look, I did not 
think about buying a bar from them and having it shipped at the same time that they were shipping the saw to me. It didn't occur that absolutely nothing I had would fit it. <laughs> so instead I went out and spent 70 bucks on a bar of chain. I guess we'll put some fuel and uh, I'm going to put 40 to 1 in it right off the bat. I, know, I think, believe these also say that they're 25 to 1, but let's be realistic. They're not. It depends on what kind of oil you're using. If you're using modern oils that we get here in the States, and you can get most anywhere, uh, then the uh, 40 to 1 mixture actually works rather well. Or 50 to 1. If you're using the still oil, you can get by with 50 to 1. I'm not using still oil. I don't care to pay the extra. Maybe I should. But I don't. Well, it doesn't really say in here. Let's see what it says on the box. If it says on the box. Yeah, it says 25 to 1 in here. And so far, a lot of the, like almost every saw that I've gotten from, I started running them on 40 to 1 about halfway through the year that I've been doing this for them. And, uh, uh, They've never had issues. In fact, I have less issues with the ones that I ran, I never ran 25 to 1 through. So I am going to go ahead and put 41 in it and uh, put some oil in it. And when next you see me, we will start it for the first time. All right, here we go. Let me find my gas and oil. I did with two cameras, so I had the audio from the other camera, but the 
audio from the, the one I'm talking to now was uh, not on, so I had to redo that. Uh, I would like to point out that yes, in that I was not wearing uh, chaps. Uh, the reason being the incision on my hip back here uh, kind of makes that very, very uncomfortable. So I was being extra careful uh, and uh, I wasn't, uh, you know, wasn't getting too crazy. I was also cutting in clear, so I wasn't too worried about a kickback. So, but I wanted to point that out and, and let you know that I was aware and I was, I, normally I would wear them, but probably for another month I won't be able to wear them. So I'm probably not going to get to do a whole lot of, uh, uh, at least uh, like firewood stuff. Uh, milling I wouldn't be afraid to do without the chaps, but uh, even then, I prefer to wear the chaps when, I, when you can. So, uh, anyway, I, uh, it runs and it cuts fairly well. Um, again, it's not broke in, and uh, my neighbor across the street has a tree down, and I'm going to actually be going over to help him out, and I'm going to take this and get it broke in. Uh, I figure I'll go through three tanks on that tree. It's pretty good size. So uh, uh, once I get done with that and I get it all tuned up after the break-in, then uh, I'll do an update video and let you know how it's going. Uh, this is also the same size as the 444 or within a little bit, and I may have already mentioned that, but uh, so I'm thinking that uh, perhaps a chainsaw showdown type of a uh, uh, video might be in order. We'll put... Uh, a Husqvarna clone against a steel clone. One could call it Clone Wars if that wasn't a copyright violation. Maybe we'll call it Saw Wars. Yeah, there we go. So anyway, have a good one guys. We'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.